Hi, St. Lucia. Good morning. Thanks again for joining us. It is this morning here in DBS with me, Chela Mendez. Today, my guest is Ms. Bonita Morgan, and she's actually the Director of Resource Mobilization and Development for the Caribbean Tourism Organization. How are you doing today? Very good, thank you, Chela. I'm glad to be here in St. Lucia. Great. Well, we're so happy that you're here. Is it your first time here in Ireland? No, Chela. I've been here many, many times before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fantastic. Now, you are with the Caribbean Tourism um, Organization. Yes. So just for St. Lucia, for anybody who may not be too aware of the organization, what exactly is the function? Okay, very good. So we are a regional development agency mm -hmm. that really represents the needs of the government members primarily of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so ministries of tourism, boards of tourism, would be the prime members of the Caribbean Tourism Organization. And we provide services to our members in a number of areas, including education and training. Okay. Yes. Great. Now I know one of the reasons you're here with us today too is there's something very special coming up soon. There's yes. going to be a workshop yes. um, being hosted by you all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you tell us more about that? Certainly. Um, we normally try to get feedback from our members in terms of topics and areas that are important to them that they would like to see workshops done in, in, uh, in these areas. Mm -hmm. And we did get this feedback that they felt that at this time in our tourism history, countries want to know what are the best models and structures out there for developing the tourism in a sustainable manner. Mm -hmm. And so we chose the topic sustainable tourism destination management and marketing mm -hmm. for a workshop that we are holding in St. Lucia from December 5th to the 9th um, in collaboration with the St. Lucia Tourist Board. Okay, great. So now with it, what will the main objectives be for the workshop? Right, so a number of key buzzwords have to stand out here for mm -hmm. us. The issue of global competitiveness. Right. How, how do our countries within the region stack up against other like competitors. For example, we always look at our competitors out there as Seychelles, Mauritius, um, Florida, Hawaii mm -hmm. even, because we're looking at sun, sand, and sea type of destinations. And so we, we are looking at how, what criteria, what indices are we using really to measure our competitiveness. And there mm -hmm. are tools and instruments out there that we can tap into and use to do so. So we want to make sure that in this regional workshop, because the workshop that we are um, having is a regional workshop, mm -hmm. that our participants understand where to find these tools to be able to measure their own competitiveness and how to use these tools in a very practical way so that they are able to benchmark against other countries mm -hmm. and also they're able to look at where they need to be able to make improvements to enhance the tourism products and services on the ground. Now, I think just for the general St. Lucian public's knowledge, yes. what exactly is sustainable tourism? Okay, so that's, uh, that's um, two words that you know people interpret in different ways, but from our side of things, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, we really say is, is the optimal use of the resources you have available to you in your country, in your destination. So we are talking about environmental resources. Mm -hmm. We are looking at sociocultural and heritage resources. We are looking about financial resources. The optimal use of those resources to help you to better plan and manage your tourism sector in a way such as m the benefits are spread more widely among the people and also the visitors have a, an enhanced and beautiful experience. And at the end of it all, we are saying that those resources are not just to be used in the here and now and available in the here and now, but those resources also have to be available for future references, for future generations okay. to enjoy and be able to, 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 to exploit and take advantage of. 
Great. Well, if St. Lucia and anybody else watching who may be interested in the industry as well would like to get more information about the organization or yes. even reach out, how can they um, keep abreast of what you all are doing? Certainly. So as I said, our partner on the ground is the St. Lucia Tourist Board. Mm -hmm. So you can go on the St. Lucia Tourist Board website and find all the information about the workshop and also register because the registration information will be there as well. But you can also go on the Caribbean Tourism Organization's website, www.onecaribbean.org, and you will also find that, that information is there, as well as other information about sustainable tourism development. So um, again, we encourage St. Lucians to come out to this regional workshop that we are having, which is from December 5th the ninth the venue is the st james club at morgan bay and we feel that because we will have a regional audience it will be really a, a rich learning experience for all of us all right fantastic well thank you so much for being here with us bonita it's been a pleasure thank you great too, and Kayla. st lucia now i know you're definitely in the know and better understand especially this topic so any interested persons make sure you be part of it and don't miss out we'll see you soon Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And as well, thank you so much for being here with us. Dr. Philip, how thank are you, you today? I'm good, thanks. Perfect. So St. Lucia, guess what? It is this morning right here on DBS. And we're going to have another health talk with Dr. Philip. Now, a lot of people, I think at least everybody or one in 10 persons might know somebody who has complained about having gallstones or heard about it. So now we're going to get the scoop on exactly what it is and get the 411. Yes. So gallstones can lurk in your core bladder and you may not know. Many people have gallstones and actually never know about it. But let me just tell you a little bit about gallstones. They're basically um, hard deposits in your core bladder, which is an organ um, very near the liver. And uh, it's a very small organ that stores bile, which is a digestive fluid made in the liver. Gallstones can consist of cholesterol, salt, bilirubin, which is discarded in red blood cells. And gallstones can actually range in size. They can be small as a grain of sand or as large as an apricot. Wow. Okay, so imagine if you have a, a, a stone as large as an apricot in your gallbladder, um, you may have symptoms of it. Um, what causes gallstones? The components of um, bile can crystallize and harden in your gallbladder, which leads to gallstones. 80% of gallstones are actually made of cholesterol, okay? And another 20% is made of other substances such as calcium salts and bilirubin. There are other stones called pigment stones as well, okay? Who is at risk of getting gallstones? Actually being overweight or obese persons increases your risk of having gallstones. People that like mm -hmm. to eat the pizza and all the fatty foods um, are high at risk of being having gallstones mm -hmm. and persons that also have high cholesterol. Um, also, persons that have had rapid weight loss in a short space of time increases your risk of getting gallstones. Oh, wow. Diabetes. Um, other factors that we have noted that have increased the risk is being female, um, being over age 40, um, being pregnant, mm -hmm. okay, and um, certain ethnic groups are more, are more prone to having gallstones like American Indians or uh, Mexican American Indian descent. Um, now, is that because of just genetics yeah. or their diets yes okay and also their diets their diets is why so wow. the symptoms of gallstones 80 percent of persons actually have gallstones and don't have any pain um however these are called silent gallstones however some people do have symptoms of gallstone and the most common symptom of a gallstone is pain in the upper right side of your abdomen okay so mm -hmm. it's right under your liver so on the right side of your abdomen the upper part that's um the most common symptom of of gallstones the pain there um this pain might radiate to your back or to your shoulder blade okay um some people associated with um this gallstones may have other symptoms such as fever um a yellowish 
colouring in your eye, jaundice. Okay. Okay, or their skin may may look yellow. Um, nausea and vomiting and clay coloured stools. Okay. Oh. How is the diagnosis mean? Okay, so most times when persons have these symptoms of gallstones, mm -hmm. they go to their doctor. Um, and most important, the doctor always takes a history, okay, and examination, which leads to diagnostic testing for the gallstones. There are blood tests that could be done, but most importantly, um, an ultrasound is done of your abdomen, where the radiologist will actually see the gallstones, mm -hmm. okay? Um, your doctor may recommend further other investigations like a CT mm -hmm. um, abdomen, that will will give more details on what is going on okay but most importantly as an ultrasound to get for your gallstones okay and for gallstones just uh, kind of wrap it up then what sort of treatment what is the usual treatment is the only way to have like undergo a surgery or okay your doctor may use any of several treatments but to remove stones and to improve your condition. But the definitive treatment is to remove the gallbladder, okay. okay? And these days, we don't have to cut you open and you have a big, long scar to remove the gallbladder. It can be done laparoscopically, where three small incisions are made and they're able to remove the gallbladder that way. Wow. And this is done at Tapio Hospital. Okay, wow. All right, well, St. Lucia, if you didn't know or quite understand what it was, hopefully this will help you out more. And of course, we had Dr. Philip here again helping us out. Thank you so much again, You're Jana. Welcome. And listen, I think all in all with our health tips, it's really just another reminder why each and every day we should make an effort to try to be healthy. So mm -hmm. if we're not living the best lifestyle, because listen, I know I felt guilty with that pizza <laughs> and all that stuff, but we need to make the attempts as well. So if we want to li live a longer, healthier life, then it starts with us, okay? And if you're having pain, there's a reason why you may be having pain. It's for you to go to your doctor to, to investigate what's going on, and you may find that you you have gallstones. Mm -hmm. All right, so listen, keep yourself in the know, go do your regular checkups as well. And if you do feel any signs or symptoms, don't panic yet, go to the expert, yeah. that is your doctor, and then you'll of course know exactly what's happening with your body. Yeah. So stay fit, stay healthy, and we look forward to seeing you next time for our health talk.